Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dale Curry, Hornets TV analyst on Bally Sports Southeast. And I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome you to Spectrum Center for the introduction of the new owners of the Charlotte Hornets, Gabe Plotkin and Rick Snall. Along with those in attendance, I'd like to welcome Hornets fans across the Carolinas who are tuning in to Hornets.com, BallySports.com, and WFNZ. Before we introduce Rick and Gabe, I want to thank Michael Jordan for his ownership and his leadership during the past 13 years. When Michael purchased the team, he promised that the Hornets would be active participants in supporting the community, and he definitely followed through on that promise. As someone who's been honored to participate in many Hornet community events throughout the years, I'm proud of how the team has become a true pillar in the Charlotte region. And as a player, I spent 10 seasons here in Charlotte. It meant a lot to me, and I know it meant a lot to Hornets fans across the Carolinas when Michael decided to bring the Hornets name back to its rightful home. Thanks again to the Jordan family for all they've done for Buzz City. With that said, today is a new and exciting day for everyone associated with the Charlotte Hornets and Hornets sports and entertainment as the next chapter in the history of our franchise begins. Yesterday, the ownership officially changed hands to a group led by the men on, my, uh, on the stage to my left, Gabe Plotkin and Rick Snall, both of whom are extremely passionate about the NBA, the game of basketball, and certainly the Charlotte Hornets. Gabe originally acquired a minority stake in the Hornets in 2019 and has been an alternate governor on the NBA Board of Governors since that time. Gabe founded Tallwoods Capital in 2022 and served as the firm's chief investment officer. Prior to the Hornets, Rick had been a minority owner of the Atlanta Hawks and an alternate governor on the NBA Board of Governors since 2015. Rick is co-president of Clayton, Dubler, and Rice LLC, where he has worked for 27 years. With that, I'd like to now officially introduce Charlotte Hornets co-chairman and governor Rick Snall and co-chairman and alternate governor Gabe Plotkin. Thanks, Dell. This is a little intimidating. A, <laughs> this is a great turnout, so we appreciate that. Um, look, we are, we are thrilled to be here today representing uh, the new ownership group of the Charlotte Hornets, and um, uh, we couldn't be more excited. I want to thank everyone for, for coming out. Uh, we have some civic leaders uh, here from the city of Charlotte. Uh, we have members of our management team. We have some players. We appreciate that. We have our basketball leadership and our business leadership and our coach, Coach Cliff, Mitch, Buzz, Fred, I see them all here. So we appreciate that very much. Um, uh, I also have, and I want to introduce, we have some of our owners sitting over here to my right. Uh, and um, we, we only represent a small, small group of, of the ownership group. There are 20 of us, but we have a, one of our uh, local owners here, Damian Mills, who owns Mills Automotive Group. We have Chris Shumway who will sit on our executive committee. We have Ian Loring, uh, and we have uh, country singer Eric Church here with us today. So I uh, wanted to welcome them uh, as, as, as we are up here, but we do have a, a great group of owners that we are representing. Um, and we are, we are a local group uh, of owners. We have a number of, of local owners. We also are a, quite a diverse group of, of owners. Uh, first thing I wanted to do is thank Michael. Uh, Michael uh, obviously is uh, the greatest basketball player of all time. Uh, he's been an incredible uh, partner to us during this negotiation. Uh, and he obviously has set this business up for future success. So we wanted to thank him for all that he's done for the franchise. We also wanted to thank him for staying in with us uh, as, as a minority partner. And so he, he's, not, he's not leaving. Uh, and he'll be around here hopefully for a long time with us and as a partner. Um, you know, it's funny, I met Michael uh, 20 years ago as a participant in his fantasy basketball camp. I turned 
35, and someone told me that at 35 you could go to Michael Jordan's fantasy basketball camp. I met Fred there too. And um, uh, in that environment, uh, we got to know each other, and that was the basis of a relationship which, which ultimately uh, resulted in this transaction. And um, we both, I do not play basketball like Michael Jordan, but we share the passion for basketball. I, I grew up playing basketball. Uh, I've played all my life. I've watched it. I love the NBA. I like to play more than I like to watch, but uh, I think that's true of everyone. I, it, it, is, it is the greatest sport in the world, and it's been a huge part of my life. Uh, and uh, I, you know, to be able to do this uh, as an owner, obviously I've done it as a minority owner for Atlanta, but to be able to do this uh, as a governor representing the city of Charlotte uh, is incredibly excited, exciting to me. And so, you know, we, can't, we couldn't be more honored to be here. We do appreciate that this is a community asset. We are in partnership with our fans. We're in partnership with the city. Uh, it's our job to be great stewards for, for, for all of you uh, and this city. And uh, our obligation is to do the best job as we can as stewards. And, you know, we, 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 we intend, we have a single simple goal, uh, which is to create the premier franchise in the NBA. Uh, and and we, we should have that expectation, all of us should have that expectation. We will strive to create that for, for all of us uh, as we go forward. So let me turn it over to Gabe. Hi, uh, Gabe Plotkin. You know, thank you guys for coming. This is a truly exciting day uh, in, in the beginning of the next chapter uh, for the Charlotte Hornets. Um, you know, first off, I, you know, I just want to thank Michael. I'm going to repeat some of what Rick said, but you know, I met Michael about five years ago, and uh, you know, he's been a great partner. And, uh, you know, he's obviously, in my opinion, and probably most, the best basketball player that ever lived. Um, you know, but the other thing is, you know, he's, he, he has tremendous love for the city of Charlotte, uh, for the Charlotte, you know, for the Hornets organization, um, for the, the state of North Carolina, you know, and, and, and for the fans. And I think, you know, one of the things that really stood out to me in, in getting to know Michael was just the respect and admiration he had for you know, all the Hornet employees and the way he treated them. And, and that's certainly something um, that we want to build on and, and, and was very notable. You know, for me, um, you know, I've always been a huge basketball fan. I grew, I grew up in New England. I'm, I'm from Maine, uh, along with Coach Cliff, wherever he is. Um, but my first interaction with the Hornets was, was probably in fifth or sixth grade. Um, the Hornets were new. It was 1988, and everyone had those, you know, those purple and teal starter jackets. And uh, I desperately wanted one. And uh, my parents didn't buy me one. I don't remember why. Um, and I think I'm going to get one now. But the, uh, it's, uh, you know, that was kind of the first introduction. And you know, the Hornets, um, they had the best uh, color scheme in the NBA then, and they, they still do today. So I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, the, the next kind of interaction with the Hornets was, was about five years later. And I'm sure Dell remembers it. Um, as a Celtics fan, it was when you know Alonzo Mourning hit that shot at the top of the key. Um, you know, LJ was on the team, and, and Kendall Gill, and, and Dell, and there's even a, a poster here uh, or a banner here in the arena. And you know, it was it was one of the biggest wins in, in franchise history, and certainly a very dramatic one to win a playoff series with a walk off. Um, but it uh, you know it's that kind of excitement that we, we want to bring to this organization. You know, we we look forward to a future with, with many playoff wins, and, and we're excited about that. Um, you know, I, um, you know, when the opportunity came up uh, to, to invest in the Hornets, uh, you know, I got to know a lot more about the city of Charlotte. And, you know, one thing that was really apparent was, was it's a really strong fan base. You know, they love uh, the game of basketball here. I mean, Eric Church canceled the concert so he could watch North Carolina Duke. So. Um, I mean, you know, that speaks to how much people here love the game of basketball and they love sports. And, you know, the, the city of Charlotte and, and, and this team, there was a perception at the time this was kind of a bottom five market in the NBA, you know, and, and we thought that was very backward looking. And we think there's been a lot of growth here uh, and the city's really booming. You know, we think ultimately, you know, this is a top 10, 15 franchise in the NBA in terms of attractiveness. And, uh, you know, it's our job to, to produce, you know, a winning basketball team. And I think, you know, for us, um, 
you know, winning takes a lot of parts. You know, it takes a lot of structure. It takes a lot of process. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, you know, you have to build the right foundation for success. And, you know, we'll be really patient owners. Um, you know, we'll try to position the business for success over the long term, try to make smart decisions. You know, but I think, you know, we want to be great in the, sort of the different components of, of building a good basketball team, whether that's analytics or player development or strategy or sports and performance. And I think, you know, ultimately, you know, if, if we become great in all those areas, uh, it will manifest itself on, on the basketball court. And we have a great organization. You know, we got to know a lot of the leaders of the organization back in March, a lot of really tenured people. Um, you know, it's, it's our goal to, to continue to, 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 to grow with them, you know, to attract and, and, and retain, you know, talent that we have here. You know, really build a culture focused on, you know, integrity and teamwork and respect, you know, openness and, and transparency and really a desire to win. You know, our, our, our goal here is, is, is to win and, and, and win with, with the people that we have here. And, you know, the final thing that, that I think, you know, this team has done a great job of and, and something we want to continue to do is, is impact the community. You know, we sat down this morning with the head of uh, Swarm to Serve, which, which is our foundation. You know, I think with a, a new incoming, you know, larger ownership group, you know, we have the ability you know, to grow that organization, to continue to impact the lives, uh, you know, of those in the community who are less fortunate. And it, it's something that we'll be focused on. And, you know, part of the reason that, you know, we really sought out local owners who had a great sense of, of, of what goes on here in, in Charlotte and North Carolina. So we're super excited. We're glad you guys all came here today. And I'll pass it back to Rick. Well, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize Muggsy Bogues here because, you know, <laughs> Michael Jordan is the greatest player, but Muggsy Bogues is my idol. I mean, the guy is five foot three, and he's just unbelievable if you've never watched him play. Anyway, um, look, Charlotte is an incredible sports town. This is a sports town, uh, and, it's a, and it's a basketball state and a basketball town, and, and we get that. And, and, and that is great, and it's great to be uh, involved in a place where there's so much passion for basketball and so much passion for the Hornets. And, uh, like I say, we're committed to invest in this franchise, to invest in our arena, to invest in our team, uh, to invest in our, facil in, in, the, in our other facilities, to invest in our player development, uh, and, and, and we expect great things. The, the future for our team is bright. We have a great young core, some of whom are here today. Uh, we obviously had a, a couple of draft picks, th both th four draft picks this year, three of whom are, are will be with us this year and, and one who's back in Europe. But uh, and we have some, some talented vets on this team. And obviously last year was a disappointing year for the team. But we, we think the future is bright. We think we have a, a great core of players that we can build around. Uh, we can't wait to get started. Uh, this is just going to be so much fun. So much fun for us. Hopefully so much fun uh, for the entire uh, community and the entire fan base. So with that, we will. Uh, Take questions, Del? Yeah, thank you both. We'll take some questions from the media and attendants. Uh, if you could wait in, until a microphone, until you have a microphone, and then announce yourself. Scott Fowler, you were here first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, Scott Fowler from the Charlotte Observer. Congratulations. Thank you. I wondered if you could speak as to why you did this together. It's a little bit of a unique relationship, and do you each own exactly the same percentage? You want to go? Sure. Uh, so, so I made a, a minority investment in the Atlanta Hawks in 2015, and Gabe came to my office in 2018 with the intention to invest in a in a basketball team. He had, we hit it off right away. Uh, a very similar passion for the game of basketball. We spent a lot of time together talking about what it would mean to be an owner of a basketball team, and then Gabe followed that up in 2019 by making his investment in the Hornets. Um, and uh, so we've stayed in touch. We are very like-minded. Uh, and um, I think owning a team is not, should not be an individual exercise. That is less fun. Uh, I always thought, and Gabe can speak for himself, that doing it with a group of like-minded people would be a lot more fun and getting the expertise. And so uh, that's how it came together. And so Gabe and I stayed in touch. And obviously, Gabe built a relationship with Michael. I had a relationship with Michael, and we were able to put it all together, we own a, a, a very similar amount. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, for us, um, you know, we, we knew each other before, 
Um, I think, I don't know if it's unique, but I think you know, we both have a, you know, a true love for basketball. I mean, we can talk about things and dating back years and name players that, that I think would surprise a lot of people. Um, sometimes we surprise ourselves. Um, but you know, what, what's great is you know, we've spent a lot of time together over the past year. We've spent some time together here in Charlotte. We spent a lot of time together on Zoom and in person, and, and so I think we're really comfortable with the partnership and the ability to work well together and, and, and think it's going to be great. Well, the logic. Go ahead, Nick. Rick and Gabe, Nick Carboni from NBC, welcome. Uh, you mentioned Michael Jordan, each of you at the top of your comments. What sort of role could he still play kind of front-facing for the organization, and why would that be valuable? Yeah, I think, you know, Michael, um, I mean, he's Michael Jordan, um, and, and, and uh, you know, he's meant a lot to this franchise. I, I think people kind of forget, you know, when he really took over and the team was the Bobcats and they were really struggling, they were struggling financially, probably not as involved in the community. He brought a lot of stability here. He also, you know, on the basketball court, um, while last season was disappointing, you know, we have a great foundation, and so I think, you know, he deserves a lot of credit for that. And, you know, he's kind of said to us, he's like, whatever you need, I'll, I'll be there. And so if it's a question about a player, if it's an issue with the league, um, if it's a question about, you know, a direction we might want to go in or, or just getting strategic counsel advice, you know, he's there for us. And, you know, over this process, um, we, we both had a relationship with him. Um, I'd say it, it's developed further, and, and, and we feel really good about it. And, and to have him as a resource, I think, is really unique. And I think the other thing is, you know, when we start winning more basketball games and you start feeling the buzz, you know, here more, you know, to have Michael around and, and be a part of that, I think, is just a really exciting thing for the NBA and for all our fans. You know, we, we had a lot of conversation with Michael, but one of the last conversations he said, look, I want to see this thing through. You know, we haven't had the success that I had hoped for, but I know we have something great happening here, and I, I, I trust you are the right guys to take this team forward, and, uh, but, but I, I don't want to leave. And so, you know, he's Michael Jordan. I think he can have great input and insight for us, and we'll continue to, uh, to lean on him in situations where it's appropriate, and he's been, been unbelievable to us in this process, and we intend to repay him with a championship. <laughs> Will Pelagic, uh, WFNZ, the radio home of the Hornets. Congratulations to you both. Um, how do you kind of meet the fans? You both have spoken about the, the level of success that has been reached recently. How do you kind of meet the fans where they're at, and, and what tangible steps are you guys looking for to try and make sure that not only do you put your own spin on this franchise, but it's a franchise that turns into a winning one? Yeah, I, I think it, you know, it starts with kind of having a long-term vision. You know, there's no real shortcuts to success. You know, this upcoming year is important, and, and we certainly want to win. But, you know, it's important for us because, well, for many reasons, but, you know, player development is really important. And, and when you have a really young core and, and, and seeing that play out and really developing those players because, you know, I think the Hornets will be really competitive next year. I think they've put in place um, – the opportunity to be really, really competitive as you look out three, four, five years. And so I think it's up to us to, to help kind of guide that direction. And, you know, and I think you know, we'll try to be a lot more active and strategic in, in, in finding ways to consistently you know, improve, improve the basketball team. Uh, hi, Eric Spanberg with the Charlotte Business Journal. Uh, Y'all have been emphasizing already the local nature of this group. Obviously, the two of you, I think, both live in South Florida or spend most of your time He's here. He's a New Yorker. I'm a oh, New Yorker. okay. New York and South yeah. Florida. Uh, so I'm curious, uh, you know, how much will we see you? How much will you be around? How much will you be in the community? And then secondly, do you expect Fred Whitfield, Mitch Kupchak, the, the executive team, to stick around? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I intend to be here a lot. Uh, I, I uh, just bought an apartment here. Um, and uh, I still do work in New York um, some of the time, but uh, <laughs> um, I, do, I do intend to be. I, I think uh, having watched it closely for eight years, local ownership is really meaningful. Being in the community is really meaningful, so I intend to be in Charlotte uh, quite a bit. We also made a very concerted effort to recruit local owners. Damien represents one today. 
uh, we can we can over time uh, we introduce some of our other local owners. Obviously, Eric is is local. We introduce some of our other local owners uh, in our press release, and there are some others that uh, we will over time. Uh, we we don't intend to make any changes to our management team or, or basketball ops in the short term. We we will evaluate. Uh, and work with, and we have been working closely with with Mitch and and Fred uh, and team here. And uh, we think, uh, like, in, and you know, I I am an investor in businesses for a living. This is what I do, and uh, you know, I think good ownership is is ownership that that uh, comes in, evaluates, works with a current team, does not make uh, rash decisions without full evaluation, and and that's what we'll do. And um, Hopefully, you'll be uh, you'll recognize that we are uh, local owners uh, over time. Ashley Mahoney, Axios Charlotte, welcome to the Queen City. <laughs> Thank you. Now, you mentioned your commitment to investing in the in everything, top to bottom. Yeah. This particular facility began substantial renovations last summer. There's talks about a practice facility um, and deciding where exactly that practice facility will be. What is the extent of talks that you've had an opportunity to have with you know, city leaders and the decisions about those investments going forward? Yeah, we, you know, we've gotten to know, hello. Uh, you know, we, we met with Tracy yesterday, um, Tracy and Marcus, and, and um, you know, they've been really helpful. Um, you know, you're right, this arena, um, you know, is, is, is a little outdated in, in, in this plans for some renovation, you know, which we think can really enhance you know, the fan experience, you know, in the coming years, that's something we're certainly um, very excited about. Um, in addition, you know, we've had conversations about the practice facility and, you know, we're still learning and, and those are ongoing conversations and I, I don't think anything's been decided, but I think ultimately it will lead to a practice facility, which most NBA teams have and, and, and we think will, will be really beneficial to our player experience. You know, I benefited from watching the Atlanta Hawks uh, renovation and new practice facility and the power that that has on a franchise. Th this facility is going to be dramatically different two, two years from now, three years from now. Uh, it will feel different. It'll be a great experience for fans. Uh, we'll have many uh, new areas and exciting places for people to go. It'll have a North Carolina feel. Uh, and so, and that, that is underway. That is agreed to. The city has agreed to put the capital in. Uh, and the project is well underway. It will start in earnest this summer in, a, in back of the house, but next summer we'll start to see very major changes. I'd also say that um, it's state of the art in the NBA to have a standalone practice facility. We do not. And so uh, our intention is to have one. Uh, and uh, the conversations are ongoing with the city. The city has been an unbelievable partner to the team. Obviously, as part of the um, agreement for the arena renovation, we've agreed to stay in, in Charlotte and in this facility until 2045, which is a significant commitment. And uh, we would expect over time to have a practice facility that our players say, hey, this is the, one of the best practice facilities in the league. It's really, really good to come here. We want to come here a lot. Uh, it's important. It's really important in terms of player development. Phil Orban from uh, WSOC, the ABC affiliate here in Charlotte. I'm, this is for Rick. I'm, I'm curious, with Gabe invested in the team and, and close to the team, what questions was maybe he able to answer for you as you were considering working together and, and, and taking over the franchise? He didn't know, he didn't know anything. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, he, Gabe knew a lot about the market. Uh, he obviously had done a lot of research. G Gabe is obviously uh, a, a real analytical mind, and so he had a real thought process on the quality of the market and the opportunity. And uh, he obviously knew the team and the inner workings of the team a lot better than I did. Uh, and so we spent a lot of time uh, talking about that as, as we got excited about the opportunity. Um, and so th I would say those were, the, those were the two major things. I think, you know, with Rick, it was, um, I mean, we were incredibly like-minded in, in really loving the game of basketball. I mean, we're fans of basketball. We haven't played one-on-one -on -one yet. He's been rehabbing a knee. Both lefties, surprisingly. But, um, you know, I got, I got 10 years on him, younger. So, I, you know, I, I feel good about that. Um, 
But, you know, Rick brings a wealth of knowledge just broadly. You know, he, he's been involved in a lot of businesses. Um, he's evaluated businesses. Um, and, and, and so, you know, his insights have, have been really helpful. And I think, you know, this is something we both wanted to do. I don't, I don't think there had to be a great pitch to, to take part in, in, in the ownership of a great NBA opportunity. Um, you know, one of the really powerful things as well, and, and Rick alluded to this, is, you know, he's been part of a, a significant renovation project and um, that was really successful and took, you know, um, a stadium that, that, you know, became one of the, you know, more well-respected stadiums in the league in terms of the fan experience. And, and so, you know, he brings a lot to the table and, and uh, you know, we're ready to get going. Hi, Taylor from Queen City News. Where can fans expect to watch the Hornets in coming seasons? Um, I think that's been a topic of concern with Valley Sports. Do you see any TV deals in the future? We, we actually don't know the answer to that question. We're obviously, we're under contract through the 25-26 the season with Valley Sports, and we expect them to live up to that contract. They're obviously in Chapter 11, so... Uh, that's an ongoing negotiation, and, and the NBA obviously is very concerned and very involved in that. There will be a place to watch the Hornets. We, we think it'll be Bally Sports under the terms of the contract, but if not, we will have alternative plans. There's obviously also a, ver a new national TV contract being negotiated by the NBA, uh, and, and over time, streaming is going to become a much more important aspect of of TV rights, as obvious in the in the new NBA deal. So I think time will tell the, the exactly where people will be able to watch the games. Guys, Steve Reed from the Associated Press. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Um, I think one of the frustrations for that you hear from fans over in, over the past you know decade or more is the inability to get some big time free agents in here. I wonder where you guys kind of fall in on the. Uh, signing big time free agents as opposed to player development you know i'm, I'm a I, th I think you look at what we have now and it, it, it's it, it takes time and patience but i think player development is really important I, I think irrespective of what you're trying to do on the free agency market you need to develop your own players i mean look at the success miami had last year and you know they lost some of those guys in the off season in terms of max Struess and uh and gabe vincent but but i think it's really important to be able to develop your own players i, I also think you, know, you want to have an attractive organization period. You want to have a winning organization. And to the extent um, you, know, you do those things, you have a great new practice facility, you, you're a winning culture, um, you know, free agents are going to want to come here. It's a great city. You know, it, it, it's, it's a great climate. Uh, the ease of getting around here is wonderful, you know, great people. So you know, I think those things will happen. And I, I don't think there's one route or the other, um, but I think ultimately, you know, player development will be a great focus, and if the opportunity is there for free agency, you know, we'll pursue that too. Henry? Yeah, you know, I, I don't see any reason why free agents wouldn't want to come to Charlotte. You know, I think the world of free agency has changed in many respects, both in terms of players' desire to go play with players they want to play with and to play on winning teams. And because now we live in a media world that is less local and more national and social media matters, it really doesn't matter if you play in New York or... Chicago and and uh, this is a great great city and I think our players love living here wish Lamella was here He told me he loves living here, but he, he's not here, but I think you know, it's a great city We're gonna have a state-of-the-art practice facility. We're gonna have a great organization We're gonna have a great culture and if we can create a winning culture uh, That people want to be around with with high character kids on our team who want to be part of it. We, we should have uh, Great success in attracting free agents over time Thank you both, and uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing everybody here at Spectrum Center for the upcoming season as we celebrate the 35th anniversary of Hornets basketball. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks,